we've got a problem we're trying to solve today. This is uh, what was supposed to be a chicken tractor. Uh, Wendy built this herself. I'm a little embarrassed by it. It's just not up to standard for the way I built the chicken coop. But um, uh, anyway, she used scrap material that we already had around here. So it's basically pieced together with lots of little little snippets of things and uh, it's too heavy to move around easy and it's also too fragile to move around very much. Um, so we've been using it as kind of a grow out coop um, for when our baby chickens are big enough to be outside but not big enough to go into the coop and the chicken run with the larger chickens. Uh, the problem we're having right now is this is just too small for the chickens to fit in there, the little chickens, but those little chickens are still a little too small to go in with the, the big chickens. We tried putting them in there and they just got really beat up, um, some significant wounds. Uh, not, it's not good. So. We're trying to do a little work around. Eventually what I'm going to have to do is just build a much nicer and bigger uh, grow out coop, probably in the same area. Um, but for right now, we're going to temporarily um, use the underside of the chicken coop itself as a grow out area. When we designed the coop, Wendy specifically wanted the coop itself to be raised up off the ground to offer a little more protection from predators and also to give the chickens extra um, chicken run space so uh, and also a place where they can just you know get in out of the rain and still be outside when it's raining um, but anyway that area underneath the coop is uh, perfectly adequate for uh, for chickens temporarily it's a little awkward to try and feed and water them all the time, especially since we have to have a barrier uh, between the big chickens and those little chickens. I'm going to have to screw that in today myself. We've got these uh, um, uh, garden trellis panels that I'm going to, going to put in so we can uh, keep that as a barrier but still have a little bit of light and air going through between the two chicken run spaces. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, trying, to, trying to solve a problem and hopefully it all works out.
that was the main panel. Now I'm going to put in some brackets to uh, have a little sliding panel to be able to get in and out and feed and water the, the smaller chickens. That'll work. So I've come out to my dad's place to use the table saw for some projects that I'm building back at our place. I really appreciate the uh, being well, able to use your, your when, shop. When we built the uh, shop a long, long time ago, it was meant to have projects. In fact, there's sometimes I feel I've been overblessed by not utilizing as much as I have for the space. I mean, the, have the table saw an eight by eight area just to hold the whole sheet of plywood. It's, yeah. you know, it's pretty nice when you have a project that you Absolutely. really have the room to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I called yesterday just to see if there's uh, room or whatever you got for projects, it would be a good time for me to come out today. Uh, Dad mentioned that he was going to be wrenching a uh, log splitter, and I've never actually seen one in action, so it was fun to come out and help a little bit with that, bring some of the log rounds that we just uh, got from our tree that we took down. You know, as we were talking that um, I didn't have a lot to do, but I was going to hand split it and uh, just didn't get around to it. And just by chance, I stopped by Reed's Rental, talked to Alan, he said, yeah, we have one. And I said, what the heck, I'll give it a whirl. And then after using it, <laughs> there's no way I could have split that because there's 95% of was snarly, you know, bent grain and everything else. So it was really, really nice to have that project done. Plus, it's like all your projects, they're just in your mind, they're just one on a list. And I don't know how long I've done had that, it's probably at least been a year, that I said, I'll get around to it, I'll get around to it. Well, now it's all split. Yeah. Now the round two is stacking. Now that I, that, <laughs> that I think I can get to in the next couple of days. Yeah. You can you can do that in the smaller smaller doses <laughs> if you need to. Plus tonight, all those uh, little pieces that are just kind of odd, we're gonna have one heck of a fire tonight. Yep. Dad Dad loves to have his fires out here on the porch, and uh, it's a it's a good outdoor space to for family well, gatherings. Yeah, you know, for years and years, you know, you go to California and Arizona and you see covered patios. And it just never made sense to me. Here we are in the Pacific Northwest. We like being outside. And uh, I just can't imagine not having a patio now covered, you know, with the heat uh, to be outside during those times that you say, gosh, I got you know, cabin fever. Well, here we can have a fire, a television, whatever, mm -hmm. and, uh, and feel like you're outside or at least like you're not, uh, you know, a shut in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, pretty nice.
often when I'm on my way to my dad's, because it's on the way, I come out here to Agilix to recycle the styrofoam we get in uh, different packaging materials. Um, I think it's the only place in Oregon that will take the stuff and reuse it. In their parking lot, they've got these blue bins, and oftentimes they're overflowing, so they put these uh, large plastic bags to catch the overflow. So, big thumbs up to Agilix. Thanks for doing what you're doing.